And welcome to Advantage Radio Ministries Second Chances here on Lift FM. My name is Greg Hennis, and we have this program each and every week. This program is actually designed to uh, be a blessing if you are a person that has ultimately made the uh, decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you understand second chances. If you are one of those people that the Lord has been tugging at you and tugging at you and trying to get you to uh, give your life to Him, this program is actually put on to encourage you to make that decision. As a matter of fact, we often share testimonies on this program. We hear what the Lord's done through people, through their various works, and At the end of each and every program, we always give our listeners the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord of their life, and we do that with our guest. And we have a wonderful guest with us today, Karen Finn. She is the uh, author, uh, actually, and owner of uh, Precept Publishing. And uh, Karen, thank you so much for, for joining us here on Second Chances. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Now, the book we're going to talk about today is entitled, Is Your Fruit Sweet or Sour, correct? Yes. And how did you come up with that title? Um, I actually had a gardening venture uh, back in the summer of 2007. I had started to notice some characteristics about the plants in my garden, and their similarities to the character flaws that we can have in our lives. Um, To give you an example... Uh, I noticed that the watermelon, that the watermelon plants that I was attempting to grow, the vine just took up the whole garden, and I thought, what a selfish plant! And and then I had planted string beans, and I thought they were. I, well, I planted beans, thought they were going to be string beans. They turned out to be lima beans, and I thought that plant is a hypocrite. And from there, I just started coming up with that whole vegetation theme using the illustration of weeds and how they can creep into um, our garden, our spiritual garden, so to speak, and and do a lot of damage. Now, this particular book that we're going to talk about is uh, subtitled A Teen Girl's Guide to Christian Living. Yes. Um, is, is, is the message really geared toward teenagers? Is this, is this reading that would uh, apply to many different age groups? Well, I, I, I originally started out writing the book, um, I had a burden uh, to definitely gear this material um, to be used for young women and with young women, but I do believe it could be beneficial to anyone, um, especially a lot of those that may be new to the faith. Um, I think my message uh, in the book is very basic, uh, so I think a lot of new believers would benefit from it. Um, I've, I've had mothers that have actually done the study with their daughters and have told me I should just scratch out the teen girl part of it because they felt that the issues are still applicable even in the, you know, as an older woman, not just as a younger woman. Now, Karen, we're going to talk a lot about the book, but I I love to usually start the program off and get to know our guest a little bit. And uh, with that in mind, why don't you tell us a little bit about where you're from uh, were you raised in a Christian home, and, and things of that nature? Okay, well, I, I was born and raised actually in northeast Philadelphia, and I lived there up until I got married, which was in 1986. Um, I was raised uh, Catholic, and that was the, the denomination of the church I was attending up until that year, and uh, my husband and I had relocated to the South Jersey area. Uh, we actually moved to William uh, Sicklerville, and the church we ended up attending was in Williamstown, and we were contacted by uh, a visitation program from their church. We were new move-ins, and they had, they had gotten in touch with us, uh, were inviting us out to church if we didn't have a home church. Um, at that time, we were attending a Catholic church, but we, um, we were searching for something different, and we uh, were feeling very, I guess, empty, just not really knowing if everything we had learned over all the years was really something we, you know, felt was something we were active with still. So uh, right about that time when they made contact with us, we decided to go visit Open Bible Baptist Church in Williamstown. And um, we both ended up trusting the Lord as our Savior in the summer of 1987. And we uh, basically grew up there. Um, we stayed there at that church for 18 years, got very active in many of the ministries that were offered to us. We uh, started our family. We have five children. Uh, our oldest is now 23. Our youngest is 14. So this is 
kind of fast forwarding now, but um, we were able to learn a lot of principles from God's word and use a lot of that to raise our family. And and uh, we moved up here to the Erie, Pennsylvania area about almost seven years ago because of a job relocation. And um, we've just continued to stay faithful and uh, continue to serve in the local church that we attend now. Now, for the sake uh, of of the people that are listening that, you know, say, well, you know, you've made that decision. It was 1987, correct, that you and your husband uh, gave your heart to the Lord. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So for the benefit of those that are listening that have not made that decision, tell us what it was like once you did make that decision and did say, Lord, come into my life, be Lord of my life. Tell us tell us about that experience. Well, um, <laughs> There were a lot of changes that had to take place, um, and when I say changes, um, probably uh, lifestyle changes. Uh, we started to have more a conviction about some of the things that we were a part of, that it wasn't something that would please God and would honor God. Um, I think a lot of it just all went hand in hand with what we were also being taught. We were starting to, to, just, to just grow and learn a lot from the Bible. We were attending a Sunday school class, which just was teaching us a lot about um, how much to value and cherish that relationship with the Lord. And over all the years, I, I think I always thought I had a relationship. You know, I, I believed in prayer and, and having a close relationship with the Lord, but it was never very personal. It was really kind of on an as-needed kind of basis. It wasn't something that I put effort into having it be a part of my life and, and have it direct me in decision-making and and lifestyle choices. So um, it was a little difficult with family. Family at first didn't quite understand because we were not a part of some things that we used to be a part of, and uh, they did see some ch- some changes in our lives and, and how we were living. Um, and some people thought it was temporary, you know, kind of, oh, it's a phase they're going through. Give them time. It'll wear off. But I don't, I don't think that's, that's not quite what it was either. Uh, Karen, talk about the fact that uh, you you now have your own publishing company, Precept Publishing. How did that part of your life come to be, and and how did you actually get into writing that first book? Well, when I started writing the book uh, back in 2007, um, I had actually first started thinking, um, I had been teaching Sunday school class for, for teenage girls, so some of these lessons that I was starting to write and formulate I thought, well, I could use these topics, but, um, you know, for, for Sunday school class, if, I, if I'm if i looking for material of my own that I want to, uh, you know, write up and use. And um, what ended up happening was I, I, I had told my husband, I, I had said, you know, I think I'm, I'm just going to set all this aside separate. I'm not going to use it. I think I'm going to write a book. And, you know, at first it was, I don't want to say it was a joke, but it was, you know, when you say you're going to write a book, it, 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 you know it can be a very long process, and and um, and that's actually what it was. It took it took a couple of years to actually complete the book, and it was something I, I would say I did kind of as a hobby. Just if I had a little bit of free time, I would sit down and work on the outline that I had come up with, and and uh, when I when I got about three chapters into the book, I started researching online what to do if you have a book and you want to get it published, and I had uh, then started to research into the various Christian publishers that are out there and uh, pursued the opportunities to, you know, what's involved with submitting my book for for publication, for them to consider even if my book is something they would consider. So it was was a lot of time that I spent also researching just to see what's required, and I, I probably spent another year and a half trying to get it published. I, I, by, by, this, by this time, I was working on each of the chapters. I was just plugging my way through it and also simultaneously trying to get it published and sending out book proposals to oh, probably close to a couple dozen publishers. And um, I was getting very frustrated. I kept getting uh, rejection letters. And it, and it wasn't that they were turning me down, saying the material's no good. It was usually more for reasons that it just didn't fit with their, you know, with their publication plan, or they already had commitments for that year, and so I just was getting very discouraged. But I did have one 
one self publish uh, I'm sorry, one small book publisher who uh, was a very godly woman who had contacted me by phone, and, and we actually developed a little bit of a relationship through emails, and, and she really encouraged me to go the route of looking into starting my own publishing business in order to get my book published. And she had given me references and uh, help, helped me actually kind of get started that way by being a, a, a woman who prayed for me and also was a, a mentor with the whole process. We're visiting with Karen Finn. She is the owner of Precept Publishing. She is also the author of Is Your Fruit Sweet or Sour? A Teen Girl's Guide to Christian Living. It's a 12-chapter topical series addressing the common issues that young women face daily. And Karen, before we continue our discussion, if someone is listening to us thus far and are saying, boy, I want to find out more about about uh, this publishing company. I want to find out more about this book and and all the things that Karen Finn is up to. Is there a website that allows them to do that, to obtain a copy of the book and kind of learn more about you? Yes, there is. I have a website that I've worked on and maintain on a regular basis. It's it's www.preceptpublishing.com. So so that's preceptpublishing.com. Yes. Okay. Now, one other thing before we actually start to really talk about your book. This is an interesting little little slogan, uh, or actually a little thing that you included in your bio here I'm looking at. And for those of you that are listening from outside the, the Philadelphia metropolitan area, uh, I'll say this, that Philadelphia is known for a fast-paced area. Am I correct about that, Karen? Oh, yes. Okay. So here's the funny thing. You're from Philadelphia, right? Yes. And it says here in your bio that Karen loves slower pace and the rural life in Northwestern PA, but vows to always be a Philly fan at heart. So I guess you enjoy the slower pace, but you keep going back to your roots where it's uh, fast-paced and Philadelphia freedom, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk about the book now. Um, what are some of the topics, Karen, that are addressed in your, your Bible study known as the book, Is Your Fruit Sweet or Sour? Okay. Well, nine of the chapters... Uh, which are the first nine in the book, they deal with the big issues. And I think um, they're the most pressing issues for teen girls today. Uh, Some of those topics include uh, authority issues, hypocrisy, selfishness, contentment, and having the right or wrong responses. And then the last three chapters of the book actually focus on salvation, spiritual growth, and witnessing. So it's, it's not like the book doesn't offer a solution or hope once you've dealt with those problems in your life. The material that you've you've covered in the book in this uh, teen girl's guide to Christian living, known as "Is Your Fruit Sweet or Sour," have you ever written a, a, a material like this before, or was this the first time? Um, well, I this is the first book that I've written and published, but I I began freelance writing in 1993 for a small town newspaper in Pittman, New Jersey. Uh, we were living in Pittman at the time, and um, I had three little kids at home, and um, I, I was looking for something that would be a little bit of an outlet for me to enjoy doing, and they were looking for a freelance writer, and my husband encouraged me to actually get in touch and see if they would, uh, you know, if that would be something that would work out, and I ended up writing for them up until we moved away in 2006, and uh, I eventually became more confident in my writing skills and took on additional work. So that's how I got started with really freelancing, and uh, and then eventually it developed into into writing a book. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you talked about 2007 is when you began to write this book? Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, what was the actual time that it took you to, to complete it? Did it, you complete it a well, year later, it, two it, years it, later? Well, it took me about two and a half years to write the majority of it, and um, I had I had started writing it in 2007 with, with that idea um, from the garden and came up with an outline and um, just gradually kind of just kept working at it, working at it. And uh, I, I remember even, even in the process of writing it, even when I had finished all 12 chapters and was, was still trying to get the book published, I actually had a small group of girls that I actually had here in my home. Uh, I, I had them commit to coming for about a five, six-week period, 
and I had them here in my home and tested out some of my some of my chapters on them. And uh, I actually it led me to develop a, a quiz that actually is also now included with the book, and that was something that came about later as a result of testing the you know the, the material out on on an aud- audience of young girls. Tell us a little bit about the quiz. What kind of questions could one find uh, if they were to take that quiz, which is now included with the book? Well, the quiz is it's broken up into categories, but you when you're taking the quiz, you don't you don't know what the the category is until you're you know until the quiz is completed. Um, and there's there's not like a wrong or a right answer. It's it's a ranking. You um, you know you can put one for one would be your ranking if that if the statement never applies. And then it goes all the way up to five, which would be what you would write down your score as a five if that statement always applied. Um, like, uh, like in the one category, there might be a statement that says, "I prefer to live by my own rules." And a teen girl, you know, there might be a, a teen girl who is, uh, well, just to tell you, this category obviously is is about authority issues. So if if you're a teen girl taking this quiz and you might read that statement and say, oh, yes, I, I definitely certainly want to live by my own rules all the time. So, you know, you would score very high, and, and then your score would indicate that at, once you add up your score that that area, um, that, that particular topic in the book when it's addressed might be something that you really want to pay extra, you know, more special attention to because it, that could be the problem area that, that needs work. We're visiting with Karen Finn. She is the author of the book, Is Your Fruit Sweet or Sour? A Teen Girl's Guide to Christian Living. She is also the owner of Precept Publishing. And uh, Karen, if someone just joined us and they missed us uh, mention it earlier, if someone would like to obtain a copy of this book, learn more about Precept Publishing or learn more about you, what is that website? It's www.preceptpublishing.com. Now, Karen, we talked about at the very beginning of the program, I said, is this girl, is this book exclusively for teen girls? And you had mentioned that it's really uh, geared for, for almost anyone. But if I said to you, target audience, is that target audience of this book really toward the teen girls, or is it really uh, a little bit more broad than that? Well, I would say, um, I, would, I would actually um, say that it is targeted for teen girls, but I, I feel that not many teen girls are necessarily going to walk into a store and be looking to want to buy a Bible study book on their own. So I feel that the book is meant to be placed into the hands of adults who mentor and work with young women and who desire to lead a study or encourage encourage them to be in God's Word on a regular basis. So the target audience is that it's for teen girls, but I believe it's a book that many youth workers could you know, definitely find very beneficial if they're looking for some lessons or if they if they want to start a small group study with a group of girls that, that they're, you know, trying to encourage in, in the Lord. So, you know, it definitely would be for an adult to want to use it for teaching material and purposes. If I were to say to you, Karen, you know, there's, there's other books that uh, have a similar type goal, but what makes your book different? from the other ones that uh, are possibly available on the market today? Well, um, there's, there's a few things I think that make, makes it very different. I, I think some of the features, um, like, like the quiz that I mentioned that the girls can take at the beginning is, is an interesting feature. Um, a lot of teen girls like to take a quiz just, to, just for fun to you know, see what kind of friend they are or what kind of boyfriend they're, they're, or man they're going to marry. Or, you know, so I thought sometimes it's, the quiz works like a type of a hook to get them interested in looking at, you know, piquing their interest in, in the issues. Um, I have an online answer key that's available for the study, and anyone that is that purchases a book is able to actually access that online answer key at my website. And uh, you know, if you're a, if you're a leader of a study, it may may be helpful to want to have that to download uh, just for extra information or for support. Um, I think that the topics that are covered are just very common issues, and I, I think that the way that I, I go about addressing them, it, it just gets the girls to be very actively looking up the answers and really reflecting on how it relates to them. Um, I don't think it's a superficial study where, 
they're going to read something and there's just a couple questions and they just put it aside. I think it's I think it's the kind of study that's uh, going to require them to really uh, make some decisions, you know, in their heart as to what they want to do now with God's Word once they've really taken a look at some of these issues. Of course, uh, whether you're talking about uh, salvation or you're talking about um, spreading the Word, uh, marketing, letting people know what you're all about is very important, Mm -hmm. especially when it comes to letting people know what they can do to accept uh, Jesus and and the Lord uh, into their uh, life. But let's talk for a moment. What what do you do as far as a marketing plan for your company, for your book, and and, and things of that nature? Well, I've um, I, it's it started off a, a little slow here, but I I actually um, I secured some book signings. Uh, one of the first ones that I had was back in May, and uh, it was it, it was very good. It was a very good turnout. It showed a strong local support uh, network of friends and contacts and and it was in south jersey and uh i'm still i just had a book signing a couple weeks ago i have another one scheduled for march uh that's that's one route to go i have a a book discussion that is actually on the schedule for uh february of 2013 uh, and that's a local library here up up in northwestern pennsylvania um i actually um I, I believe the marketing plan is all very contingent on how aggressively I promote it. So um, I, every week I email probably at least a, a dozen or more uh, churches or camps or bookstores just to let them know that, hey, this book is out there. Um, I have actually have submitted my book to some Christian colleges and it's under review at quite a number of them right now. Um, they're they're taking a look at it to consider stocking it in their in their campus bookstores, knowing that it's you know it's a book that can be used for uh, you know even a college level uh, student, someone or someone who's actually planning to want to work with youth. So that's uh, my marketing plan. Really, just kind of includes really uh, kind of getting it out there to a lot of contacts like that 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 are influential with the young audience. Um, I even have a Facebook page and a website blog. <laughs> so social media does play a big part in marketing, too. Well, that's good. And, and hopefully interviews such as this uh, also are, are helpful in, in you spreading the word, and hopefully you're able to get more of those. Yes. What um, If I were to say to you, Karen, well, you know, that's what you're doing, what kind of results would you ultimately like to see as far as uh, where things end up with the company, with your your exposure of the book, where would you like to see, ultimately see things? Well, I, of course I would just like to sell tons and tons of books, <laughs> but it's, it's not just about you know, selling and, and making the money from it. Um, there, there's a lot of times when I was working on the material here that I would just be so excited about something that I found in the scriptures, and it just would confirm to me that God was really like smiling down on this project. So I, I really just want the book to help those who are investing their time and attention to it, and um, that's why I really desire for it to be in places where it has exposure, like like a Christian camp or a bookstore or a, or a college campus store. So I, I just think for the day and the age that we live in, it's, it's, it's very difficult for young girls to keep a godly testimony, and uh, the world is sending them such a conflicting message, and living a life that is pleasing to God needs to be in the forefront of their minds all the time every day. And reading God's Word and, and having having a book, a, a, even a, a book like this, that is going to help them apply it and it will help them to keep their fruit sweet for the Lord. Any plans to write another book, Karen? Uh, yes, I, I have that on a back burner. Um, I, I do have one. Um, I've been working a little bit on this outline in the context, and I, I think it'll be another Bible study, most likely for young women again. And uh, I'm I'm really uh, planning on having it be a book that focuses on on a on a girl finding her worth and her well-being in the Lord. And I, I see a lot of girls struggling with identity issues, um, having a poor self-image of themselves. So I I want it to be a book that's going to give them hope and confidence in knowing that God values them more than they ever will know, and and that their future is so bright with promise and purpose 
and but they need to have God in the center of everything that they do. And of course, uh, as we've been talking about uh, throughout the program, the book is entitled "Is Your Fruit Sweet or Sour: A Teen Girl's Guide to Christian Living." Obviously, you have a heart for the teen girls, and I, I just know, Karen, that there's there's people that are listening to this program that say, "Boy, they would like to have that." Christ-centered, God-honoring testimony to share with people like you have. They want to make that change that you and your husband did back in 1987. That's what they want. The only problem is that they just haven't had that opportunity. And and Karen, we would certainly love it if you would uh, lead us in a word of prayer. And for those that are listening that would like to have that opportunity, if you would lead us in a word of prayer to give them an opportunity. Okay. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this time together. Thank you for this opportunity that you've given me on Second Chances to, uh, to share this, this wonderful project uh, that, you, that you've laid upon my heart, Lord. And Lord, above all, I do pray that those that are listening, Lord, if they've not made a decision to trust your Son as their personal Savior, Lord, I pray that they would really consider just who he is in their life. What does Jesus mean to them? And do they understand, Lord, that he has come and died for their sins and has uh, paved the way for them to have eternity in heaven with you. And we just pray, Lord, for those souls that need to be saved and pray for those young girls, Lord, that are searching for answers, Lord. It's, it's all in your word and it's all through your son. We just thank you for how you can move and stir and change lives. And we, it's, it's all in your glory and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Our guest on Second Chances has been Karen Finn, the author of Is Your Fruit Sweet or Sour? A Teen Girl's Guide to Christian Living. And Karen, one last time, if someone would like to obtain a copy, learn more about Precept Publishing or what you are up to, where you're going to be with book signings, things of that nature, give us that website one more time. Okay, it's www.preceptpublishing.com. Tune in next week for more Second Chances here from Advantage Radio Ministries and Lift FM.